found uh, directing and also acting in the film, how you were able to be your own boss and also be the boss of your other, your other cast members. Well, this, hi. Uh, first of all, sorry I couldn't be here for the introduction. I was stuck in traffic. Welcome to Chicago. <laughs> um, yeah, I wasn't supposed to act in this film. I, I uh, had someone else in mind for this role. And uh, about three or four weeks before we started shooting, he had to pull out. So we auditioned uh, more or less every single Iranian male actor <laughs> for the role during that time. and. Somehow, I think I was just stuck on uh, having him play the part, and since he couldn't do that, I, I just thought maybe I'm the best one to do it because at least I knew exactly what I wanted to happen. I didn't have to uh, explain all those things. We didn't have very much time to rehearse if, if I were to, some, to, 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 to choose someone else. Questions from the audience or comments? Sure, in the back, yes, sir. Um, I'm wondering about. Uh, uh, hey, where are you? <laughs> oh, yeah, hi. <laughs> I'm wondering about this this kind of interesting tradition of uh, road movies in Iranian cinema and how you see this film as part of that. Yeah. Um, you mean movies with cars in them specifically? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, people who are familiar with Iranian cinema know that we use a lot of cars in our films. I really don't know what, what's going on there. It's uh, become a tradition and we're sort of stuck in it. I think there's, I've thought about this quite a lot, why we are so fascinated with the idea of doing films in cars and telling story, stories that take place mostly in cars. I think we have a very uh, complicated relation uh, to the idea of public versus uh, private space. Anyone, can you hear me? No, no not it's, not. Like it's not working. Just give me a second. This was working just Yeah, it was working. Fine. Uh, I'll try to speak loud. Uh, and uh, a car is a place where uh, you can have both. It's sort of a private space within a context of a public space. You can have sort of a private conversation in a public space. That's uh, it's, it's probably easy for you to imagine how that feels here, but for us, it's a, it's a really uh, complicated issue, mixing up private and public spaces in Iran. So I think that's why. But it's become a habit more than anything else. <laughs> yes? Um, I'm wondering about, as for the story, I, I have to admit, I, I didn't know what was going on. Uh, what, what, is your question what the hell was happening? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, like the two lead characters were totally un unpleasant characters. Right. And I don't exactly. I know there's meaning to this, but I didn't get it straight off. Can you give me a little? Is it a parable? Is it a allegory? What is it? Um. <laughs> this is a very challenging question. Um, it's I, I don't. It's not a. I, I, it has a structure of a parable. That's true. I mean, uh, the episodic nature of the narrative and, uh, and how things sort of feel like there's a sort of hidden meaning behind what's going on, something supposed to be sort of adding up here. Uh, yeah, I can see how that the structure of the story does that. But I, I have never, you know, I've never been interested in a, a metaphoric or a symbolic meaning behind the story. I think What's fascinating is, in fact, what is actually happening in the story itself. And if you take that literally, I think you take, you, it'll make a lot more sense than, than, than looking for some kind of meaning behind it all. What was the quote at the beginning? What was that from? The quote from, at, at the beginning is from the Quran, actually. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it says that if, you, if you're not modest about uh, the act of charity, you'll be like dust on a stone that will be washed away by rain. Is more or less what happens in the film. And this came afterwards. I, this was uh, just before we started screening the film in Tehran. I, uh, somebody suggested this quote to me, and I thought it sort of resonated with what actually happened in the film. So I used it. In the back, yeah. Uh, I have a question about the, uh, how did you go about the permits for shooting the film? Did you have to go through and approve the script in Iran because the process made a difference? The 
only film that I've seen, uh, a feature film in Iran recently that has like real di dialect that's not censored, curse words, has alcohol in the film is uh, Fat. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. Sorry, what's the film? Uh, this feature film came out three years ago. Fat actually is Fat directed it. It's called Fat Rail, Walk on a Rail. Right. This is the second film that I've seen that has real dialect. Did you have to go through uh, trouble of getting this approval? This was done kind of under a carpet. No, 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 this was, uh, this was fully legit. You, the way it works is you, you, you submit your script to the Ministry of Culture, it's approved, and then you go shoot your film, and you present the film uh, to the same ministry, but to a different committee. Uh, and if it's approved again, then you're fine. That's what happens with this film. I'm just surprised because of the, um, you know, the, the dialogue. Yeah, I was equally surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You say that we shouldn't look for subtext. Now I'm all the more puzzled. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> it takes, takes a sudden turn. In the beginning, there's this humorous piece to it. And suddenly, you, the character in the film, suddenly change your approach to it and, 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 and nuance it in a really unpredictable kind of way where now it's not just giving the money, but but running a game on these people. For instance, the two brother tribers. Mm -hmm. There was really something, not really unpleasant, but ugly about that game you were running on them. And then it turns even uglier with the father, uh, even though even though there there turns out to be a backstory right. to what you're doing. It still is ugly what you've done to the man. And 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 now I'm all the more puzzled because you said don't look for subtext. If there's not subtext here, then we're really confused. <laughs> well, first of all, I didn't say don't look for subtext. I said it's not a symbolic or a metaphorical film. There's always subtext. Uh, but that's just, that's just, uh, that's not a big deal. Um, what I mean when I say that is that if you take the story as it's happening, if you, if you see a story of, like, for example, if you see, see it as a story of a man who's slowly beginning to enjoy in a kind of sadistic way, the game he's playing, and, 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 and sort of falls into the trap of, of, of enjoying the, the power he has. I think the film will make a little more sense than if you try to look, you know, try to sort of reduce it to a certain kind of a metaphor or something or other. I mean, you can do that. It's not up to me whether you do that or not, obviously. I'm just saying that when I see the film myself as an audience member, myself, I, I, it makes a lot more sense to me if I don't look for hidden meanings and just take it as it is. Um, I'm trying to say that it's more satisfying for me when I, when I see the film that way. Myself. Yes. How did you come to choose this topic? Or it in this way? Um, this is a very difficult question to answer for I think every person who tells stories. Uh, it's really hard to know where stories come from. Uh, bizarre associations in, in the back of your mind kind of at, at a certain moment force you to you know, pay attention to a certain story as opposed to the other ones floating in your head. But there was a there are a couple of things I can I can explain. One was a, a, a discussion I had with a a very good friend of mine. Uh, I think about twenty years ago, uh, there was an earthquake in north of Tehran, and and he had gone to help the people who. You know, by the earthquake, and he was telling me about the fantasy of have, if he had a whole bunch of money in his car, what would he do? And we started talking in a sort of joking, kind of sickly joking way about exactly what happened in this film and you know, the power of money and blah, blah, blah. So, and this was 20 years ago, so I was much younger, and I, I, I sort of had these idealistic notions about what to do with the money and all that. And uh, so that's one. And the other thing, which is a richer event, is that I saw a certain image that you see in the film yourselves. Uh, this image of a man, uh, one of the, the, the older of the two brothers, at the moment when the money's being taken away from him, this sort of close-up shot. It just, I just saw that in my mind one day in the shower at 7 in the morning. I, I saw him, and I thought, well, who is this guy? And why is he looking so sad? And what, what's wrong with him? And then I started weaving the story around that, that image, and then I was reminded of that story 20 years ago, and it all came together. We've got time for about two more questions. More questions. There's somebody in the back, yes? Yeah. 
Yes, uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, sure, surely uh, uh, the characters had a, a surreal quality about themselves. There was almost, in the beginning, some a angelic about them, but of course, as the gentleman said, uh, they began to change in terms of the motive. Uh, my question is, uh, I'm, 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 I'm clear that all movies are trying to communicate some type of message and so forth. Uh, is the Iranian people uh, kind of uh, uh, ascetic or uh, 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 less materialistic? Because the, the difficulty of them being able to give away that money, that of course, that, that consumed the whole film. And uh, most of the, uh, the people, they seem to not want to accept the money. Is it, is it something that you're trying to say that the Iranian people should embrace maybe a little bit more prosperity? Uh, any blessing that comes, maybe they should accept it and you know, go on? Uh, before I finish, I'd like to say your choice of the music was outstanding. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what can I say about that? There's somebody in the audience who's responsive for it. Thank you, Carl Wilson. <laughs> Help me find the music. He laid it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, first of all, let me take issue with this idea that uh, all stories are supposed to sort of have a message. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure if that is true, but we can discuss this at some other point. Um, and no, I, I don't think. I, I, I don't think this is sort of anything specific to the Iranian people per se. I think that. Um, when you walk, leave this theater and you sort of walk down the street, and somebody, if, if somebody comes up to you with a bag, you know, containing uh, a million dollars worth of they're not, they, they're not going to stop quoting the Quran or the Holy no, Bible. No, no, no. no. That money. <laughs> <laughs> no, you will, you, you will probably take that money, but uh, it wouldn't be an easy thing for you to do right away. You would be concerned about taking the money. You would want to know where it came from. You would want to know who this person is, you, you'd hesitate, I think. Maybe you specifically <laughs> would, but this I think... This is America! <laughs> <laughs> well, the, idea yeah, well, yeah. the idea of Tarof, I think, that's something that, that is in our culture, and, and I think that's something that... Maybe. I, I, I just I want to insist that anyone in a position <laughs> like that would be kind of shocked, at yeah. least. Yeah. And the shock would make you kind of stop. Right? I don't think that's such a desire. Yes, yes. The way I someone who will be able to resist their temptation. And if you see that, see a story that way, as if they're really hoping, uh, and desperately hoping to find somebody who could who, who would be able to resist them, uh, and being unable to do it, and, and the sadness that comes with this failure of actually finding someone who can do that, uh, sort of leads to the sort of a slow disintegration of the whole. The acting, the acting was superb and the translation was mm -hmm. absolutely phenomenal. 
Yeah, the translator of the symbol is actually a really capable person. So thank you. Well, thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.